Today I'm going to share with you how I create an avant-garde beauty look using paper doilies and two studio strobes. Lindsay Adler here. I always talk about the importance of collaboration. I love working with other talented artists because they make me look better, but they also help give me great ideas. And so I'm talking about wardrobe stylists or hairstylists or makeup artists and creative team is really important. People often say to me, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's easy for you based on your career, but we all start someplace. We all start at the beginning building a team. And so that's what testing is for. You meet people, you network, you create beautiful images together, and you build a core group of creatives that understand your vision and you create beautiful art together. And that's how it works in the world of commercial and fashion photography. So I wanted to show you one of these creative collaborations and break down you know, what role I played and what role the other creative artists played and how we work together to make this final image. Uh, now the word avant-garde, uh, I use this word quite often, but for me, it is often implying something that's unexpected, it's not ordinary, it's theatrical, and that's exactly what you get out of this image. It looks almost like the subject, the model has, uh, looks like they have fins growing on the side of her face, but it's in fact paper doilies. So here's how this shoot went. Uh, I often do these creative play days, and on my creative play days, what I'm doing is I'm hiring two, maybe three models, and I have a hairstylist and a makeup artist, and our entire goal that day is just literally just to play, to experiment, to try new things. And I usually have a mood board of inspiration, maybe three shots, four shots that I want to try to achieve during that day. But then after that, I say to hair and makeup, what ideas do you have? You know, what, what kind of concepts have you wanted to experiment with? Because we all want to learn and to grow and the, the whole point is to create. So my makeup artist uh, showed up and she lays out these paper doilies. And if you don't know what paper doilies are, um, sometimes they put them under cake. Sometimes people use them as placemats. They're just these beautiful little cutouts of, of paper. Um, I kind of associate them with like grandmas, <laughs> to be honest. And so it's not something I would never have even looked at. My makeup artist shows up and she lays these paper doilies out and she said, we're going to make something with this. And so I left her to it and I didn't direct. I didn't uh, ask for anything in particular. And she brings out the model and this is what the subject looks like. And so from there, I need to figure out how I want to light it and, and how I really can add to what she's created. And what's really nice is originally we were taking the photos, the hairstylist looked at them and the subject had dark hair and he goes, you know, the hair is not adding to it. So we just took talcum powder and put talcum powder in her hair. And that's how we get that, that almost uh, statuesque look is because she's pale. Then we have the white on her face and then it blends to the powdery look in the hair. So it's these creative artists that are giving me something beautiful to capture. So this is what they present me with. And now it's my turn to do the photo part. So let's take a look behind the scenes and I'll show you a little bit about the lighting and the post-processing as well. Now this scene is lit with only two studio strobes. So let's begin with my first light, which is a Profoto Magnum Reflector. Now Magnum Reflector is a hard light modifier. It's basically a, a big silver dish. The reason that I chose this is because uh, I wanted to show the texture in the doilies. If you saw the cutouts of them, I wanted to emphasize that texture. In a softbox, I didn't think would do quite justice to that texture. The next light in the scene is actually on the background, and that is a 10 degree grid. The point of that is so the background doesn't fall dark. It'll light the background and just create a little bit of separation without becoming too distracting. So that is light number two. So there's something else that you'll notice in this scene, and that is called a black flag. And fundamentally, flags are just this, this uh, absorbent black material. It absorbs light. And so it's usually meant to prevent the bounce of light or to block light from hitting something. And that's actually what it's doing in this scene. What I found is that when I was lighting my subject with that hard light, the paper was going really, really bright, really overexposed. So by putting the flag in between the light and the subject, it casts just a little bit of shadow and it prevented the paper from going overexposed, brought everything into the correct exposure. So it's actually a pretty important part of my shot. And next let's talk about the camera. I was shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV, an 85 millimeter lens, and I was shooting at F11. Now you'll notice in this behind the scene image, uh, there's a lot of paper doilies on the subject's face, more so than the final image, but I actually created several different looks. We started off with a little bit of paper, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and the idea is we start off with something simple and build to something even more extravagant, and one of them is going to be successful, and maybe, maybe even more. 
So let's take a look at what I captured. So this is the shot as it was captured in my camera. Um, I mean, her skin is beautiful and the makeup is beautiful. So it actually looks pretty good as is. There's a few things that I might want to change. For example, there's a little bit of redness on her shoulder. Um, it might smooth out the skin on the neck and the face. And I actually think she looks quite a bit like a sculpture. So maybe a little bit heavier retouching would be appropriate in the scene. I also think because the doilies are white and her hair is white, that I would like to go with more muted colors so that it feels very sculptural. So what I decided to do is in raw processing before I went into Photoshop is to desaturate the skin tones. And so you can see here, what I did is I desaturated the skin tones. I also played with a little bit of color grading as well. You can see that the picture got a little bit cooler and I also increased the clarity. So what the clarity does, notice how it emphasizes the texture in the doilies and the hair. And then now once I emphasize the texture, there's some dark spots on her face, some texture on the neck, some areas that need to be smoothed out. So I brought the photo into Photoshop and smoothed everything out. I also adjusted the color a little bit more there. And you can see that the photo becomes more desaturated with a little bit more cyan in the shadows than in the original. So here is the original shot. And then here's what I ended up with. So the original shot was close, but I cleaned up the image a little bit more and played around with the color grading. What I love so much about this shot is that it's not something I would have come up with on my own. That's the magic of collaborating with other artists is they add to the equation and they help me come up with ideas that I never would have stumbled across. What's even better is that this is something very simple. It's a DIY, basically paper attached to the subject's face, but it makes something elegant and beautiful. If you'd like to see the gear that was used in the creation of this image, be sure to check out the links in the description. And if you want to see more of this creativity and more of these collaborations, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.